now we have all the particular parameters, we can go and work out the entire link budget for how much of that 27 watts that started at the satellite makes it down into our receiver. So we begin with 27 watts. I'm going to take you through something called a link budget, which is just simple accounting. So we start with 27 watts and we say, what is the gain in a particular direction? So the direction we're going to focus on initially is for the satellite at zenith, which means straight overhead, which corresponds to that blue line that we saw before. So I should do that in blue. So at zenith, remember the gain was 10 in the previous diagram, and now I'm getting a bit more precise. It's in fact 10.2 dB or 10.5 in linear ratio. So then the effective power radiated towards the Earth is just 27 times 10.5 is 294 watts. So remember, we pretend that that's the power from the satellite in all directions. And for this particular direction, it's going to work out right. Then we can, having done that trick, we can treat the spreading loss simply as 1 over 4 pi r squared, which is that number. And you see how what small numbers we get right away when we talk about the radius of the signal from the satellite to the Earth. Um, then we have to account for atmospheric loss. This is conventionally put at minus 0.5 dB, which means we're about 90% of the signal makes it through the atmosphere. And so we multiply those things together, and that gives us the received power density as shown. Uh, there's the receive antenna gain for a patch antenna, as I just described, for 3 dBi would be 2. And the effective area of the antenna, which we just looked at in the previous video, is that number. Uh, finally, there's something called polarization loss. We haven't discussed this yet, but the signal from the GPS satellite is polarized, it's circularly polarized, it travels through space in a spiral. And if an antenna is not polarized, then we lose 3 dB of power, so we only have half the power in a linearly polarized antenna instead of a circularly polarized antenna. Now, we'll see in a minute that when the US Air Force publishes the interface spec, they choose to, to specify the received signal in, t in terms of a linearly polarized antenna. So we must account for the polarization loss. That's why we put the half there. So we multiply all that together, and we get a received power of 1.41 times 10 to the minus 16 watts. And so now you see why dBs are so useful, because a number like 10 to the minus 16 is very small. It's such a small number that the adjective, the prefix for 10 would be something called addo watts. And addo watt is 10 to the minus 18 of a watt. It's a very uncommon term, and we don't use that terminology. Instead, we use dBs, as we just learned in the previous module, and we take 10 log 10 of that power in milliwatts, we get minus 28.5 dBm, which is what we saw on the previous slide. So that's for a satellite at the zenith. What about a satellite that seems to be on the horizon? So that would have been the red line in the previous slide. So, so let's say for a satellite at 5 degrees elevation as viewed from the Earth. And then what I've done here is just shown the numbers that are different in red and the other numbers are the same. And as we mentioned, by design, the antenna gain for the part of the signal that has to travel to the edge of the Earth is larger than the gain at zenith by the same proportion that the spreading loss is larger. So after we multiply that out, we're back where we started, and we end up with minus 128.5 dBm of received antenna gain. So that's doing the link budget ourselves. And now we can go look at how does that compare with the interface specification. So GPS interface specification document is something very important, and you're going to live with this thing a lot when you work on GPS. And inside of this, there are plots to show you the expected signal power on the surface of the Earth. And so let's look at what that looks like. So this is an extract from those plots. And what this shows you is the received power at a 3 dBi antenna. We've just learned what a 3 dBi antenna is, something that's that has a gain of 2x, or 3 dB, that's linearly, linearly polarized. And so remember, we lose half the power for linear polarization. So this is how the interface spec for GPS, the, the design document of GPS published by the US Air Force, this is how they specify 
the minimum guaranteed received power on the surface of the Earth, and they do it in dB watts. And as you see here, at an ele they show it versus elevation. At an elevation of 90 degrees, they guarantee you will get minus 158.5 dB watts. And if we convert that to dBm, it means we just add 30, and so there's our number, minus 128.5 dBm. And at 5 degrees elevation, it's the same thing, as you see. We get that value there, or that value there. It's not quite flat all the way across, just because of you can only build an antenna with a certain kind of gain pattern, and so it's not possible, or it's not, it's not convenient or to be able to get this signal strength perfectly flat all the way across. It goes slightly up at an elevation of 40 degrees, but what it tells you is that for a low elevation satellite or for a high elevation satellite, you will at least get this number, minus 128.5 dBm, which we just worked out. So before we finish here, let's just go over some little details that you should know about. First of all, this number, minus 128.5 dBm, used to be specced as minus 130 dBm. Minus 130. And that was because the and dBm, that was because the atmospheric loss was budgeted as 2 dB. And then people discovered, or the, in particular the, the US Air Force discovered that the that the atmospheric loss wasn't as great as they'd budgeted, and they without changing the satellites, they redid the minimum guaranteed signal specification, and so we gained one and a half dB, although we didn't practically gain it, just in the accounting, we gained it. But this number, minus 130 dBm, lives on, and most simulators you'll see that specified as the minimum signal strength, although in real life the signal is actually stronger by one and a half dB. Also, remember, this is the minimum guaranteed signal strength when you're outdoors, and when the, the satellites are newer, the signals tend to be stronger, and as their batteries age, the signals get a bit weaker. So often you will see numbers slightly higher than this by a, a couple of dBs. And finally, you might know from experience that and signals close to the horizon seem to be lower, and that seems to contradict what I'm showing you here. This says that a signal at 5 degree elevation has the same received power as at 90 degrees, and that's true for the signals that are hitting the antenna. However, for practical antennas like this one, they don't truly have a hemispherical gain that instantly drops off to zero. If we went and looked at that, uh, if we skip back and uh, look at that gain pattern, it's impossible to make a gain pattern that's perfectly hemispherical and then drops off to nothing. So the gain pattern of a hemispherical antenna sometimes drops off close to, the, close to horizontal. And so that means that the antenna causes a loss of the signal. So you may see satellites that are close to the horizon appear to be weaker in signal strength, but that's only a function of the antenna. If you tip the antenna on its side, you'd see that the signal at 5 degree elevation is indeed the same strength as the signal directly overhead.